Um, I like to just think about big key centers, you know. Yeah. First, and just so I'd be like, okay, like all of this is F major. Yeah. Right, and then, and try to think about just improvising melodies in F major rather than worrying too much about getting into the details of yeah. back and forth and back and forth and back yeah. and forth and back and forth, um, and then and doing the same same here and, and, and through all of, you know through the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, would be like the first thing I would do. So just trying to, you know, like they, we talk about, you know, Louis Armstrong, just, you know, his improv improvisations are just based on like the melody and just kind of going off of the melody. So, you know, sometimes with like my students or whatever, I'll be like, okay, let's just improvise on the melody and yeah. go over, we'll just go through that a couple times yeah. and, and, and just, you know. So do you have a, like a, um, like a, a formula that you would, you know, not just to play this, but, yeah. um, to sit down with it and you you look at the, the changes and find those those melodic or linear sort of things going through it. Yeah. You, yeah, uh, yeah. So basically then what we would do, I would sit down and I would we would just kinda of talk through the changes and kind of sit down at the piano and like try to play through the changes and kind of just talk about, you know, which parts are in what keys, you know, and kind yeah. of trying to group everything together. Yeah. You know. Which you know, I'm sure you can do. And then, in yeah. terms of like uh, the process, this pro kind of process is then what we I have my students do is like improvise using only like one note per measure. So getting totally rid of like the rhythmic aspect and just focusing on like connecting the changes and hearing the harmony through and all yeah. that kind of thing. So it's like we'll just do the roots all the way through and then. And then just improvise. Seven, seven, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, all that sort of thing. And then just like practice improvising a line, like maybe in one direction, either up or down, with one note per chord. So, you know, whatever, start on A, B flat, and then play C, D, E natural, G, you know, just kind of yeah. go through and kind of find different lines, either ascending or descending. And then do the same thing with half notes. And so okay, now just do half notes and do a couple courses like that, and then just quarter notes, which essentially sounds like a bass line. You yeah. Know, and so then we'll practice like just going back and forth with with that, and then from there, sometimes if we have time, we'll just practice like just doing eighth notes and just you know running the scales like either from the root first, and then just like doing the same thing like how long can you go in one direction before you have to switch around and come back the other way, kind of like super slow, like way slower yeah. than than this, yeah, you know, just yeah. just to like hear your way through the changes. So, so yeah, so, and, I mean, there is kind of a process that I would do if we, if there was time to yeah, like, sure. go through all of it, you know? Yeah. But, and when I get stuck on a tune or like feel like I'm playing the same things over and over again, that's what I, what I do, yeah. is like slow it way down and try to find a new pathway through the changes using, you know, quarter notes or eighth notes just to kind of figure, out, figure something out. Yeah. And then add back in the melodic and rhythmic information later after we've already kind of got the harmony because yeah. you know once that's down once you kind of know what's going where you know it's kind of makes things easier yeah in terms of phrasing because mm -hmm. i think sometimes you know i find what people struggle with in improvisations that they got the right notes but they don't have the right like accents in the right places of the harmony meaning like where it's leading to or mm -hmm. where it's like a resting place and kind of not phrasing with it yeah you know what i mean yeah like when we were to go from this place to the next place is like just getting a little bit of um bebop vocabulary kind of under your slide that's so it's just kind of more automatic because we want to have be able to have like kind of the chromatic stuff that right. makes it sound like bebop or whatever you know okay, just yeah. kind of like just surrounding tones so that when you're playing this one under there's a little bit of like chromaticism in that so that yeah that's what kind of makes it sound a little bit less basic you know yeah. what I mean? so okay. yeah. like an easy exercise that I use so in, in this key just think about C7 is Starting on the root and then surrounding the seventh and surrounding the third. So it'd be like. Just to get those chromatic surround notes kind of like into your. When you see a C7, yeah. it's not just the C7 notes, but it's like, oh yeah, I can surround those 
color tones to g give it that chromatic uh, feel. Yeah, I, for some reason when I'm playing, I can't, like I, I practice some lines like that, which I can do in most keys, but like when it gets to playing a solo, that all, like my brain just goes completely blank. I just can't seem to. What I would suggest for like taking lines and stuff through the keys is getting it from a solo. Right. Finding something from a solo, and why I say that is because, like, you can transcribe. Like Steve Davis plays this tune, and so some great, like, super clear lines that you could take from it. Yeah. And then you can literally just plug them in to the tune, and you get used to hearing them, like, in the right okay. spot. So, like, yeah. when I'll have my students, I'll be like, all right, on the second A, play that line that you transcribed, you know, here, mm -hmm. and then improvise your way to it and out of it. Okay. So that way you start to connect that vocabulary with your natural vocabulary. Because I find that if you never just like force yourself to like play it, or if you just have like a line like you're saying, it doesn't it's never gonna just like naturally come out yeah. in the solo unless you force yourself to practice. Um if I'm feeling comfortable in a certain area but not in another area, so would you aim at that area where I'm feeling less comfortable to do that? For in instance, you know, when it gets Maybe you know, going through the the A section, I'm, I'm feeling like reasonably comfortable with what I'm doing, but I'm getting like bogged down in the in the B section. Would you maybe concentrate on doing something like that? You Just, could. Yeah. But like, the only thing that's going to happen with that in this particular case is that there's not really like lines that are going to help you on the bridge of this tune because it's like two measures of one sound. Yes. You know, okay. so like if you find some bebop line or language that works over that, it's not going like, to, it's only going to work on that part of the tune. So for me, like, I like to work on things that are going to be more than just right. one, one thing, you know? Yep. So like okay. here, it's just like, it's, it's more of a melodic moment to me when you get to the bridge. Yep. It's not like a shred these changes kind of moment. Yeah, it's okay. Like play more, mo so to me, right. yep. I just play more melodically in, yeah, okay. in a yep. place where there's more changes, or mm. less changes, yep. rather. Okay. In terms of taking line licks through the keys, I usually focus on ones that are like dealing with dominant to tonic yep, okay. harmony. Yeah, because I think you get the most out of it, mm -hmm. like or orally. Right. I mean, that's just my opinion, but.